40% of honeybee hives have died off in the past year. It's a trend that's been going on for several years, could be devastating. Look at the chain. No bees, no pollination, no pollination, no plants, no plants, means no life on Earth. That's a catastrophe. Here is theoretical physicist and author of The Future of the Mine, Michio Kaku. Is it that bad? It's potentially bad. We are at the top of the food chain, and we, don't, we, have, we forget the fact that it wouldn't take much to dislodge us from the top of the food chain. And pollination is at the bottom of the food chain. So many crops, so many uh, vegetation depend upon insects for pollination. So do we know what's causing this? That's the killer. We don't know. We think that perhaps maybe it's pesticides, perhaps it's a virus that we, ha we haven't cataloged. There's no consensus in the scientific community. But it's so right serious. Now, it's serious, but we're at a halt right now because we don't know where to apply our technology. Somebody's going to blame global warming at some point, and I've not heard that yet, but I'm sure I will. It could come up. <laughs> it will. <laughs> but I want you to get, you're a physicist. Mm -hmm. I want you to give us the physics of a train going around a left curve at 106 miles an hour. Give me the physics of that. Well, if you're a jet pilot, you know that when you bank on a turn like that, you have G-forces, G-forces that push you into the chair, right? You can calculate that when this train went around that bend, the G-forces were such that the train tilted 10 to 20 degrees, enough to shove it right off the rails. There was no way the train could survive on the rails traveling at that velocity around that sharp turn. Why was it going that fast? I mean, I, I, you probably don't know the answer, but it's astonishing. Well, you know, we have common sense, which violates Newton's laws of motion. Common sense says that when you double the velocity, the G-force doubles, the energy doubles. Wrong. It turns out that if you double the velocity from 50 to 100, the G-forces go up by a factor of four. Energy goes up by a factor of four. In fact, that's why teenagers die so often in, in car accidents. They think that a fender bender at 30 miles an hour is nothing compared to a fender bender at 60 miles an hour because it's just double the velocity. No, it's four times the energy when you hit a car at 60 miles an hour. And that's why so many teenagers never make it after a collision Ouch. at 60 miles an hour. But the, what, the, what I'm reading between the lines here, if you have a super fast train, a mm -hmm. bullet train, mm -hmm. it's going 200 miles an hour, for example, right. it can't go around curves. The, except the radius of curvature has to be very, very large. Now, the radius of curvature of the bend was about 1,000, 2,000 feet. If you look at GPS pictures yep. of the railroad track, from then you do the math. And you can calculate the G-forces are sufficient to push it right off the rail. However, in other trains, like bullet trains, their radius of curvature is much larger. It has to very be. Very shallow curve. Or else they're just going to fall off the rails. What about this asteroid? Here's a new subject for you. Mm -hmm. There's an asteroid. It's a, I am told it's a mile wide. By eighth the size of Mount Everest. That's big. That's big. And it's coming within how many miles of the Earth tonight? Well, today is the, the D hour because this object, the, one of the biggest in recent memory, is going to come whizzing by the planet Earth. If it hit the Earth, it could take out North America. But it's not going to, is it? It's not going to. It's going to, be, it's going to miss us by six million miles, which that's is... That's close in space terms. In cosmic terms, it's a whisker. <laughs> okay. It's just going to so, graze the Earth-Moon system. Now, you can see this thing coming. That's Supposing right. we knew it was coming right at us. Is there anything we could do about it? No, we are sitting ducks. We are powerless to do anything that is coming our way. No, we could send up a nuke. We could send up a rocket, couldn't we? Get into outer space and blow it up before it nope. arrives. Nope, you cannot send Bruce Willis into outer space to intercept these things. Because, first of all, there's no space shuttle. It's been canceled. Second of all, the space shuttle just spins orbits around the Earth. The last time we left Earth orbit was when we went to the moon. And that was decades ago. We have no booster rocket. I repeat, no booster rocket capable of going into into deep space to intercept an asteroid. So what is the greater threat, the decline of the honeybee population or the possibility of an asteroid hitting us? Well, it turns out that the honeybee <laughs> thing is a direct threat. It can influence your, your dinner table today. However, the asteroid threat, you no, know, these do come by, but on a scale of centuries to, to millennia. So I think that we can rest assured, but we need an insurance policy in case something does come by with our name on it. Okay. Michio Kaku, always a pleasure. Thanks for being with us, sir.